Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Paula G, and this is Paula's Perspective. The power of what goes on in between our ears can steer the course and the direction as to where our lives will go. And we develop mindsets based on our life experiences, and for some, we have a positive mindset. For others, it's a little bit more difficult. The process to change can be a lengthy one, but you can start today by obtaining your free copy of my ebook, Road to Success Mindset Journey. I'm really excited about this book, and I hope you will enjoy the journey. You may go to www.pologyvoice.com, the Paula G Show Facebook group page, or the Paula G fan page to subscribe to Road to Success Mindset Journey. Now, once you complete the subscription, check your email to confirm. Then your copy of Road to Success will be emailed to you within 48 hours. I also invite you to reach out to me on my Apology fan page and share your thoughts by writing a review. The road to success begins with your mindset. So be encouraged. Well, hey, everyone. I'm so glad that you joined me again for another episode of Mindset Conversation. What's the conversation that is going on in between your ears? And today I want to continue our conversation by talking about the media influence. And of course, we have some relative scripture to go with this as well. You know, I always say to you all that the greatest conversation that we will ever have is the one that takes place in between our ears. The question is, what conversation are you having in between your ears? That conversation is affected by what we allow into the conversation. And we allow all kinds of entities into that conversation through our sight, through our hearing, through our taste even, through the touch, through the smell, all of our senses. We allow certain influences into our beings. Now, you might ask, how can that be? Well, you know, there are certain things that you might see that might trigger a certain response. There might be certain things that you hear that might trigger a certain response. Certain foods that you taste might take you back to a different time in your past, especially your childhood. You know, when, you know, sometimes if we're eating a certain cereal in the morning or oatmeal or certain dessert, you know, for some of us it's peach cobbler, you know, that conjures up certain memories And as it conjures up those certain memories, it may also conjure up certain perceptions or or certain feelings that then enter that conversation that is going on in between our ears. So, you know, we get influence from all different ways. But what the one thing that has really kind of disturbed me a great deal lately is the influence of the media. And I'm not here to criticize the media, knock it one way or the other. I'm just simply bringing a concept of, or an element, shall we say, let's say that, an element of mindset to the forefront. And that is the media influence. We, as a people, not just here in this country, but other countries, we are all influenced by the media, what the media projects how it projects it, and then how all of that kind of settles in our spirit or settles in our mindset. When we see certain things on television, when we hear certain things on the radio, on our computers, on our, our, our phones, on social media, all of these images affect that conversation that is going on in between our ears. You know, in our last episode, we talked a bit about our limited understanding or our limited exposure to perhaps other cultures, other peoples, other races where, you know, we may have some general knowledge, most of which a lot of times, not often, but a lot of times it's based on what we see in the media, you know, what we what we hear, or in some instances, what we've learned 
over the course of the years, whether it has been in school or whether it has been something that has been told to us by family members, we, we have a limited understanding, a limited knowledge, limited exposure to people who don't look like us or live like us or talk like us or walk like us or whatever it is that they do because we're not aware of, of how others, uh, others live to a certain degree. And that can create space for us to form our opinions of others based on, like I said, other sources, based on, 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 on media. And the thing that I really get disturbed about when it comes to the media is how they portray certain things, how that kind of settles into us, and then how we respond to that. And I believe last time I gave some examples. You know, we see certain images on television of, of black men. We see certain images of Hispanics or Latinos or Muslims. And now we are forming an opinion about those particular races or people or, you know, in some cases, the, the gender. We're, we're, we're forming all of these opinions. And I re- remember some years ago, there was a young lady who uh, went to a certain college in the area and she did a study abroad program. She went abroad to a country overseas, well, outside of the United States. And she was walking down the street one day. This gentleman was on a bicycle because it was a country where a lot of people ride their bicycles. And he reached over and just grabbed her, her, her rear. And she was so startled, she was so shocked that she turned around and she just slapped him and she slapped him so hard that it knocked him off of his bike and she was so angry. And as he was on the ground and she was, you know, looking down, why did you do that? You know, I don't know you, you don't have a right to touch me, that sort of thing. And he says in his native language, he thought that's, that's what all, that's what I thought all African American women like. And she's like, why would you think something like that? And his response was, oh, well, based on what I see on the videos and, and the television shows that, that, that we see, they get to see a lot of the reality shows and, you know, some videos that don't necessarily depict women in a positive sense. And so he just assumed, based on his limited exposure from media sources, that that was the standard and that was the norm. And that really, really really bothered this young lady and it really bothered me when I heard when I heard the story myself because then it really got me to thinking of just how we form these opinions and how we judge each other based on sources that may not necessarily be accurate or may not necessarily be valid sources we're influenced by so many different things you know I think of so many other uh, incidences in the past throughout our history You know, you look back and think about the Holocaust and how all of that started. You know, it wasn't that that, you know, a particular segment of people, Jewish people were doing anything horrible or or bad or anything of that nature. It was one man's influence over a whole country, over a whole country that that was turned against a, a segment of people. And that can be very dangerous. You know, we have seen on television some of these horrific massacres where you've had people that have gone in and and, and killed a whole group of people, you know, and when they were asked why, or sometimes they leave notes behind or they're asked why, and they have this twisted perception of that group of people, like, you know, they needed to die because um, they're evil people, or they need to die because they do this, or they need to die because they do that. And you sit there and you listen to this in astonishment. It's like, how in the world do you do you come up with that uh, opinion? But a lot of times it comes to us not only through, you know, maybe our upbringing, what we've been exposed to, but what we see on television, what we see in the movies. You know, it, it, it can be a very, very dangerous thing. And that's why it's so important for us to really begin to really, really be conscious and aware of what we allow in between our ears. You know, there's so many times when people are falsely accused of things based on stereotypes or, or, or stigmas. And I'm possibly thinking that perhaps some of you that are that are listening may have been subject to 
something of that nature, where you were falsely accused of something based on the color of your skin or your gender or how you wore your hair or your religion or whatever, you know, whatever it is. You know, so we, again, we just have to be very, very careful about what we are letting into our spirit. So my question for you today is, what are you letting into your spirit? It's just a question for for thought. What are you allowing into your spirit? What kind of conversation? What kind of information? And I want to take a scripture now. It's Proverbs 28, 26. And it reads as follows, those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. I like that. Those who trust in themselves are fools. You trust in yourself, you trust in your own being. The scripture is saying those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Wow, what does that mean? Again, you know, we go back to saying the greatest conversation you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. But if God is not part of that conversation, then we then become the proverbial fool. Just like it says here in Proverbs, those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. That conversation that's going on in between our ears, if God is not part of that conversation, then we become part of that proverb. But walking in wisdom means walking in what God has spoken to you through his word, through your quiet time with him. That's what we need. That's what we need to influence that conversation that is going on in between our ears. You know, our lives are so incredibly busy and sometimes our prayer life can suffer. You know, our prayer life and just commune time with God, it becomes less and less, it seems like, for some of us. Not all, for some of us. Our, our prayers become more and more shallow. And by that, I mean, it, you know, they become more and more general. You know, Lord, thank you for everything. Bless this person, bless that person. And we all, we all definitely want to, you know, lift others in prayer so that they will be blessed. But it seems like sometimes we get less and less specific. You know, have you ever had the experience when you were really deep in prayer, how you can be really specific about what it is that you're praying about? You know, whether it's a problem or whether you're asking God for something, when you're really deep in prayer and really spending some time with God, how you can just get to the nitty gritty of it. But you know, when we're, when we're just before we're going to bed and maybe we're very, very tired and we might say a quick prayer or we're driving, you know, and that's a lot, a lot of times, a lot of us pray when we're driving. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with quick prayers. But over a period of time, if we engage more and more in those quick prayers, which, you know, quick prayer is better than no prayer. But the more and more we engage in them and the less and less we engage in lengthy time with God, it seems like sometimes his voice gets dimmer and dimmer in our ears. What it is that he has to say to us often gets harder and harder for us to to hear. So it's it's really, really important. And I know most of you do. It's really, really important to really each and every day set aside some quality time with, with, with the Lord. I know I could do better in my own life as well. And if that's something that you feel that you can work on, well, you know what? We all can work on it, really, when you think about it. We all can work on spending more time with him, meditating more on his word, reading his word, asking him, Lord, what is it that you want me to know? What is it that you want me to do? I've become very, very conscious about watching the news and how much news that I watch. And I've gotten to the point where I watch watch just enough to keep up with what's going on in the world, but that's it. You know, we become what we spend time doing or what we spend time hearing. And you may ask yourself, okay, well, how, how is that possible? Or how can that be? You know, watching bad news all day long, whether you realize it or not, can create anxiety in you. Or it can even create depression because we subconsciously carry around what it is that, that we've seen or what it, what it is that we've heard. I remember years ago, I was married years ago, my husband was in the service and it was during the first Gulf War. And I was glued to the television practically 24 hours a day, seven days a week, looking to see what was going on, what was happening. 
and you know a lot of the news stations, stations, especially the big ones, the nationally syndicated ones, they're showing the same story over and over. It's like a loop. It's like a reel. reel. And you're seeing the same story over and over. And I can recall that after a while, you know, I developed such anxiety. You know, I felt very stressed. And my life at the time wasn't that stress, stressful, you know, but I just felt this constant sense of anxiety, this constant sense of, of, of stress. And at the time, I couldn't figure out what, you know, what it was. And then I realized, you know what, I'm, I'm allowing this stuff into my being, into my spirit 24-7. And I say 24-7 because a lot of times I would fall asleep with the news on. You know, and I know sometimes some people don't don't believe this, but I, you know, I'm one of those people that believe what you fall asleep to, you wake up to. What you fall asleep to, you wake up to. And to this day, I, I try if I'm falling asleep to something, you know, some soothing music, some you know, smooth gospel music, maybe like the Quiet Storm, you know, a, a, a sermon, someone's sermon, a podcast, something that's that's positive, you know, something that uh, is is preaching the word of God. I want to fall asleep to that. I want that to get into my spirit in a subconscious, you know, fashion. And some people, you know, don't believe that it occurs. And some people do believe it occurs. Either way, if you do fall asleep with the television on or the radio on, try to make sure it's something positive and relaxing and, and, and soothing. Because we definitely become what it is that we carry around in our heads, what we carry around in between our ears. The time of this particular episode, we are approaching a new year. With that being said, we need to do what it is that we need to do to renew our minds, you know, renew our bodies, renew our spirits. You know, we want to have a renewed mind and, and healthy perception. So how do we go about doing doing that? How do we go about gaining a healthy mental perception? What is your mind diet? You know, we have a, a, a diet for our bodies. Do we have a diet for our mind? What what is our mind diet? What are we feeding our mind? You know, we gotta we gotta maybe adjust our mind diet there a little bit. The scripture is Colossians three one through four, and I want to read it to you. Colossians three one through four. Since then you have been raised up with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Wow. Being raised up with Christ, setting your heart on things above. Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Your mind is on things above and not below. Remembering that he died so that we might have life. Just something to meditate on. Developing a healthy mindset. How can we do that? How can we develop a healthy mindset? Matthew eleven twelve might help us with that. For it reads, some have said it is possible to be so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. Well, this is, this is not Matthew eleven twelve, but just kind of sharing this. And you know, when we look at the history of the church, in some instances, it was it was those who were most heavenly minded, heavenly minded, <laughs> who did the most good. Heavenly minded people who did the most good. So from the days, you know, back when of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been advancing, forcefully advancing. And our scripture, Matthew 11, 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and forceful people, forceful people lay hold of it. The kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. How is that? Why is that? What? has brought people to, to, to violence? What, what kind of mindset? And you know, the, the, the phrase goes on to say that the people who forcefully grabbed hold of the kingdom of heaven are the ones advancing it. Though on earth, they had a heavenly mindset. Having a heavenly mindset is very important for advancing the kingdom, not only in our lives, but here on 
earth as well. A heavenly mindset. A heavenly mindset. A heavenly mindset. Think about that for a minute. A heavenly mindset. Can we develop a heavenly mindset? We sure can. We just have to change our mental diet. We have to pour into our minds and nourish our minds with that spiritual food. Feed on the Word of God. Studying our Bible, reading our Bible, which are two different things. Studying our Bible, spending time in study of the Word and what it means and what it meant at that particular time. Because as some of the language and, and some of what I just shared, some of the language may seem strange to us. The kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. The language may seem strange to us and our understanding comes from spending time in the Word of God. Spending time in prayer spending time in meditation, listening to uplifting gospel music or Christian music, being in a good Bible-based church. And you know, when people say that, I, I have such a different perspective of that now. Being in a Bible-based church. There are so many false prophets out here nowadays, and that's a whole nother conversation, but there's so many false prophets out here today perpetrating as the church and affecting people's mindsets. People who don't know the Lord are being taught the Word of God in a manipulative way, and thus their mindsets are being manipulated. That's another conversation for another day. But just continue to think about your mindset. Continue to think about that conversation that takes place in between your ears and during the holiday season as we move on into our new year. You know, think, do we, are there any adjustments that need to be made in your mindset, in my mindset? How can we spend more time in the Word of God? You know, do we have some perceptions about other people that we may need to gain further information so that we can have a more accurate perception of those individuals? You know, like I said one time before, we were talking about the mindset and misperceptions of people. You know, not, not all black men are in prison, although yes, Lord, there's so many, but not all, you know, not all Hispanics or all Latinos are, are criminals as some would lead you to believe. Not all Muslims are terrorists. You know, our minds, we are just so manipulated each and every day about what we allow into our minds. And I hope in, in this series of conversations that you're really kind of thinking and, and it's helping you to understand how, you know, our they say the mind is the devil's playground. And it truly is because everything begins in the mind. When you wake up in the morning, your mind is going to tell you either to get up or not get up. Your mind's going to tell you to take a shower or don't take a shower, brush your teeth or don't brush your teeth, go to work or don't go to work, go to school or don't go to school. It all starts in between your ears, whatever it is. It all starts in between your ears. That conversation, that greatest conversation that you will ever have, the one that starts in between your ears, make sure, make sure God is a part of that conversation. And Father God, I just ask today that as we embark on a new year, Lord, that we embark on a new mindset, Father, and that anything that is not of you that is in our minds to purge it and remove it lord and to seal up our minds lord seal up our minds against anything that is not of you lord seal it tight lord not even a pinhole lord seal it tight purge what is not of you in our minds lord seal it up lord and begin to saturate our minds our bodies, our spirits, Lord, with nothing but your word, nothing but your spirit, Lord, nothing but whatever it is that you have called each of us to do, Lord. Just fill us up, saturate us, Lord. Lord, I ask that you continue to cover, you continue to bless, you continue to keep, you continue to protect, you continue to hear the prayers of those who are within my listening ear, Father. If it's finances, if it's family, Lord, if they've just lost a loved one, Lord, if they have a health issue, Lord, whatever the issue may be, Father. If it's education, Lord, just I ask that you meet them at their point of need, Lord, and 
Lord, I know they will give you the glory. They will give you the honor. They will give you the praise as I always do, Lord, each and every week for allowing me to have this opportunity to talk with your people, to share what it is that has been laid upon my heart by you, Lord, to share. These and the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great, great, great rest of your day, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening. Know that God loves you, and so do I. Peace and blessings. What you find